First at 630, major cleanup continues days after Hurricane Milton swept through Florida. Problems persist into Sunday for people looking for gas in the Tampa area. This is another long line that you're looking at today for drivers waiting to get their tanks filled up. Let's get you a check of the facts that we know at this hour. At least 23 people have died as a result of this storm. Nearly 900,000 Floridians remain without power and over 3.1 million customers have had their power restored. Stored. President Joe Biden visited the Tampa area today. He flew in Marine One over the Tampa area to get a look at the damage caused by Hurricane Milton. That's the images you were just looking at. After that tour, President Biden visited St. Pete Beach, where he met with storm victims and thanked first responders. While there, he announced $612 million will be used to help communities impacted by Hurricanes Milton and Helene. This funding will not only restore power, but will make the region's power system stronger and more capable and reduce the frequency and duration of power outages while extreme weather events become more frequent. President Biden says power infrastructure changes are a continuation of what he started when he was vice president, which includes burying transmission lines underground and replacing wood power holes with concrete or composite ones. President Biden spoke about the national relief efforts, including FEMA delivering 300,000 liters of water and 2 million gallons of fuel. He says 100 satellite terminals have been installed to restore communication in the area. 10 disaster recovery centers have been set up in the area with more on the way. On the state level, the Florida National Guard has activated nearly 6,700 soldiers and airmen. They have rescued 330 people, 39 pets, and have cleared 2,000 miles of road. One area though struggling to get back to normal is St. Petersburg, which is just south of Tampa. Many people there have run out of power or gas at least once since Milton hit. A good chunk of St. Petersburg also still does not have power for gas. Gas is out of shortage. Tap water is not safe to use. And we have CBS News Miami's Steve Majori there live from Roberts Park. Steve, the city has set up some charging stations to help out there. That's right, and the Roberts Recreation Center is where those charging stations are, and this was initially a shelter for first responders, but now it's just a place for people to go in and use the outlets. That's because the power is still not back on, but here I want to show you in this neighborhood near the Recreation Center, we found these utility workers trying to get the power back on. This is what people have been really waiting for for the past couple of days. You know, you know there's still debris that needs to be cleaned up, but the, right now the main thing for people is they really do need to have the power on, but many people still don't have it so for the time being they have to spend their time over at this center. People I spoke to took more than just their phone for charging. They have so many things that need electricity. There were power banks being handed out, but the place ran out of them. I spoke to a woman who needs to charge her devices for work, and she needs electricity to use her power tools to clean up her yard. There's also ice being handed out here, since electricity is what powers the refrigerators. I'm told people here still don't have the power on, and this is one of the few places where they can go to power their devices or even just cool off. I'm also charging my power bank. Hopefully we'll charge my phone and my computer if it dies again. Again, um, and batteries for the tools and the fan at the house, and we got four of those to charge. It's another thing; it's too hot during the day, so we have to go here where it's nice and cool, or you know, drive around where the car's AC. And back here live, you can see these crews are still working on the lines around here. There's still debris that's in front of people's yards that they're trying to get rid of. And also, there is still a boil water notice on here in St. Petersburg. So right now, the water is really not safe to drink or use as it comes out of a tap or faucet. So pretty much anything, Chelsea, from water, electricity, and gas is still very scarce for these people here. Yes, yeah, let's talk about the electricity. Obviously, without power, you can't charge your phones, your computers if you work from home or you just need it for everyday activities. How are people doing without them? Well, what they have to do really is budget it, something that we use all the time. Now, really, you have to look at the cost of it. Every, even a convenience has a cost. If I need to call my mother or a friend of mine, that uses up power on your phone and there's not electricity to charge it. Or if I need to make a trip down to the store, well, that uses up gas. And so people really need to look at the cost-benefit analysis for pretty much any kind of consumable that they have. All right, Steve, thank you. We see the power trucks behind you, so work is being done. We appreciate you out there.